Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take junk that we turn into home decor that we sell in our shop here in Lehigh, Utah and also at JamieRayVintage.com. This was from the thrift store. Yep. We paid $3. Yes. Uh, it didn't well, have a was tag. it three? It didn't have a tag. I had to ask the manager. Oh, gotcha. Um, I knew it had potential, but it also is a little sketch looking. So. Um, once it's all done, we're going to get it. Uh, it's actually already listed, right? Because we're from last week's thrift haul. Yep. So it's already up at jamierayvintage.com. Um, and it's just got like some metal coming apart here. The fabric needs to be redone. But I think we can make it look like an old chest. We tried to get our supplies together, but we may have to yeah, we got, we got duck a, out for a stencil or two or whatever. We got whatever. a pile of stuff over here. Who knows? Who knows um, what we're going to need? <laughs> If you guys are crafters and DIYers, we also sell all the products you're going to see us use at jamierayvintage.com. And Ivy is on here this morning dropping links. Caitlin is at the shop. Our shipping computer slowed down. And one of Caitlin's many tasks is she's also in charge of a lot of IT. And so she's getting that all set up to get the new computer going and faster and everything. So she's there. I don't know that here. she's in charge. She just doesn't have patience to wait on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so she just goes charge. and she does it and she's like and so now she's kind of like segued into hey caitlin i'm gonna bring you a computer put mcafee and get all the permissions on it and listen she's <laughs> she's the gal zeb is good at computer work but you can only do so many things yeah i don't, don't be offended like i we, gave yesterday your it card i gave yesterday's uh problem about an hour try it's probably an issue between firewalls and wi-fi and all that and then i was like you know what I'm just gonna go get a new computer because I don't have time to mess with this, and the gals need to get to work because right, they're waiting so on me. This is gonna be interesting. So I don't know. Are you gonna rip that up, or are you going to? Here, here's a kitchen screwdriver. I'm gonna to take this you. fabric off of here somehow. All right. So this is just OSB inside. It's really thin. I've never seen anything that thin on OSB, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, and then you can see here. This is. Well, maybe you can see if I focus the camera. There we go. You can see the lip there. It's pulled away from the box. So we got to figure that out, do something with that. I might, I'm half tempted to like pull it off, reshape it, throw it back on here because it's it's a mess on the four of these, or well, two of these bottom two. It's like it was slid a lot and someone and something caught on it. Okay, I got that back up underneath there. Well, it's coming off decently well, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to get off all this paper. This is not fabric. It's like paper on the bottom because it's glued. So, so. This, this corner is rounded. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of bending it as I can. And where it won't go, I'm, I'm just creasing it with the hammer. And then I think I'm going to glue it down. I don't know that this is the best way to fix this, but it's how I'm going to approach it. You're hammering it down and gluing it? I'm going to glue it. I don't think I can hammer it. This is the wood is not thick enough to really put a nail in there. Okay. It was probably glued before at some point. All right, that's looking better already. This is the weirdest. I've never seen them use paper before. Yeah, it's and glue it down. It's like they decoupage the paper on the can you guys hear us okay today? I try. I checked all the mics and did all the things, you know. <laughs> it's a struggle. I'm halfway there, Zeb. Did we have pliers? Um, I do have some pliers. I've got these needle nose right here. Or these adjustable no, this will do. ones. All right, so I'm just going to keep working on this till I get enough of it off. Then I will get started on recovering it, which is pretty straightforward. We've got our nail gun here. Honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to need to glue this now. Like that, that worked out. What's this on there? One of the tricks I've learned from upholstery is sometimes you have to grip it and then roll it. And that will help pull it out. Gives you some extra tension in case you don't have the muscle required for the task at hand. It's weird because this is just like fabric. So once I get, or paper, once I get past the fabric that they also glued on, then it's just coming off. What does my shirt say? It says, save the planet by vintage. 
reuse, repurpose, recycle. I felt like that was appropriate today because this is Waste Not Wednesday. But also, um, it was clean and hanging up, so that was another. <laughs> That's also a bonus. I have done zero laundry since we got back from out of town. I barely had the laundry done from the last time we were out of town at Debbie's, so that's where we're at. I was going to do some laundry yesterday, but we wound up, since Zeb went into the shop to see what he could do on the computer, I went in to help ship, and then once I get started shipping, I can't stop. So I was there like four hours or so shipping. Some of you may be getting packages with little I like hearts and thank yous from Jamie. I didn't do it on every package, just a few of them. I was like, oh, I should probably say hi in this package. If your order was shipped yesterday, you have a 30% chance that it was me. Or it was Odelia or Maria. I, I mostly do, when I go in, I like to do the home decor orders because the paint and products, like I don't ship enough to know where they're all at. And so it's much more efficient for like Maria or whoever's working to ship those. I like to ship the home decor because typically those are like pulled on a shelf. Sometimes they need a few paint and products, but they're pulled and ready to go and they're odd shaped. So it's like challenging to figure out how to like ship them so they arrive alive. I'm halfway there, so. Oop. How are you doing on your end? Are you waiting? I'm almost done, yeah. I just You're I'm almost gonna, done. I'm gonna clamp this while the glue dries just to help hold it in place on a couple of the spots that were bent. Well, I was a thinking more. while the glue's drying on that, because we probably need to let it dry a solid 15 minutes, maybe um, more. How long do you think? 20? Oh, no, that's fine. 15, 15 What glue would did work. you use? I'm I just don't using like this. That glue. I feel like it doesn't dry fast enough, but I think okay. it's going to. I think it's gonna be fine. I don't have any other, I don't have any epoxy mixed up. That would be my other option. Well, I was going to do some nails on it. That you said nails don't work? No, it's too, it's too, too thin. Okay. Like these hinges are riveted in. All right. Well, we have an hour. Maybe we need to let it like half hour. Are we going to paint the box? Yeah. Go Naturally, ahead. we're going to paint the box. Yeah. If anything was ever going to be painted did in you, this world, did, it would be that box. Did you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have some backup projects to work on, so you don't have to watch glue dry. We have a couple rolling pins that we need to get done, so we thought we could do that. And um, we have some things to wax. And I'm just going to keep working over here. I'd say i go set it out in the sun, but it's still winter storm advisory out there. No, the winter storm advisory has gone. And we won't have uh, snow again, hopefully, till next Thursday. And we should have sunshine and 60-degree weather by this weekend. And I woke up this morning. I was like, I made it. I made it. I survived this last snowstorm. It was, I feel like everybody in Utah was so depressed by this last snowstorm. Like even the, I felt fine. Even the people that, okay, you're always fine. And even if you weren't, you wouldn't tell us. However, True even facts. the people that like to ski and snowboard are over it because some of the snowboard, like some of the ski lifts are, there's snow all the way up to the ski lifts, so they can't even move. It's the most crazy thing. Set some records though, record snow levels. I'm excited about that. I like records. Trish says she has, she'll have to check. If you didn't order home decor, it definitely wasn't me because I only shipped home decor, but it could have been Odelia. All right. So this one's going to get a stamp like we like to do. And then Mama Bear Blue, um, she's one of our retailers. Video. I watched the video. I saw how she did it. Um, she used some of the new rice paper on a rolling pin. Um, so Amy over there, giving her all the credit for the idea. I loved it so much. I'm going to try it out. Do you have paper? I'm going to find some. I've got some, I've got the chickens I could put on here. That, that would, be would be very good. fun and colorful. All right. I'm just trying to get off all the fabric. So that way there's only paper left. And then I'm going to remove any staples that are like risen, but any staple, Oh, any staples that are flush are going to stay in here. I'm not taking all those out. All right. I need I'm not brush. about that life. Where, where are those brushes? We um, have are those though? short staples that are in there? Because I don't have a lot of wood here. So I don't want to. They have... are short ish. So you should be fine with the padding on there. Okay. I don't want. I mean, not that anybody's going to actually sit on this chest. but. So I this is about. I, I could do a quarter inch staple. But by the time you get that thick drop cloth fabric, I've got three eighths staples in here. Okay. That'll do. And when I mean I could get a quarter inch staple, I'd have to go to the hardware store. I don't have them. <laughs> We're not running to Home Depot right now. Okay. Look at this. I'm getting there. I thought this would be a lot simpler than it was. So this brush just got washed. I'm trying to get all the water out of it before I paint with it. All right. Cottage colors, built-in sealer. 
we already have one coat on here. I'm just gonna do a second because this one's gonna get the stamping and then I'll paint the handles. And you want it to be full coverage over the stamping. And then the other one, I'm gonna just paint white. And then I gotta go find a paper that I have here. You guys have been buying so much of it. We haven't had any here at the house because everything I print out is getting shipped or sold at the shop. Oh, did you send some more Marie Antoinette with Eliza? I did not, but they're printed. Okay. After this live, we need to send more paper because I know there were some orders that they were trying to ship yesterday. We were out All of those. Right. Second coat on here. Okay. Going to do nice, even brush strokes on this. Okay. Now I hold it for 10 minutes while I wait for right it to back. dry. Press that end down in some. I'm kidding. I'm not going to wait for it. I'm going to break the rules and heat gun the sealer. So we have the box we started with. We're going to let that dry. I just set it over off to the side. And then this is going to be a fun little project while Jamie upholsters. Lysol. All right. Just enough to... I might even, this wood was a little darker on this rolling pin, so I might even do a third coat because it's got some peekaboos. A lot of times when I'm doing upholstery on chairs, I have about this much fabric left over. I save it for stockings, hot pads, uh, pillows, in this case, upholstery. We don't want to waste it. That's no. pretty expensive per yard. I don't think you've bought a lot of fabric. I have It's not, it's $16.95 a yard. See, Which is I not wanna, like dollar. See, when yard. I'm buying fabric, I'm like, yeah, that should be like a dollar fifty, on like that thin stuff that you buy. This is nice quality fabric. I know it's it's some fabric. This is, is heavier duty. This is heavier duty than these drop cloths we're using. Yeah, you and can we have the heavy duty drop cloth at JamieRayVintage.com. We actually had a bunch of quilters that were in town yesterday for a convention, and Odilia's like, we need new fabric scissors. She was cutting fabric for them, and they ordered quite a bit they like picked it up at the shop so i just have new scissors being delivered today were they were the they shop. telling her about her scissors well our scissors no she just said we need everything. new ones but we had scissors like specifically for fabric i don't know what happened to them all right that's i'm thinking i want to do i want to center this or i think i want to do it off center because i feel like centering is too hard would that be weird to do it off center because then we could do a stencil down here um yeah that'd be fine I feel like I've already made the decision. So. Yeah. I feel like you were talking out loud to me about what you were already going to do. Yeah, I was. <laughs> so we have more fabric than we need, but I don't really care. I'm going to staple it, then I'll trim it off. Okay, so that one's going to get stamped. This one's going to get the decoupage. Can I have the nail gun? And I need some safety glasses probably. Do we have any? Oh, I feel like you'll be okay. Just don't put your eye down in there. It's not strong enough to zing stuff through that fabric. I say that and then we'll have an issue. Did it go in all the way? Yeah, it's fine. To be honest. Wear safety glasses. Wear folks. safety glasses. If I was not on camera, I would not be wearing them. I usually use them with the nail gun. The staple gun is a little different, but I like to do things the right way on camera. Otherwise I get comments. You probably still will. Yeah, I probably still will, but too late now. I watched these, uh, shows these diy shows on hgtv they don't use crap they're like not even using anything yeah, that looks good i'm like you know that if they're not doing it on camera they're never doing it <laughs> i do wear safety glasses a lot now my question is once i do this i think what i'm going to do is take some more leftover of this fabric and cover it this way and put it on but i'm wondering should i staple gun it or should I hot glue the fabric that's going to go on here so that way it's neater? Because otherwise you'll see the staples. I don't know. I'll think about it. Because um, it's not it's not the upholstery on the top. I would just hot be... glue that portion of it. I think that's a that's a good option. Do you want me to get the hot glue gun out and ready? Yeah, you want to get that ready for me? Thank you. Jackie says she just used some fabric she bought for me to upholster a chair. And Ivy said she ordered more fabric yesterday. Oh, Ivy, while you're on the phone for what, don't let me, or while you're online, don't let me forget, they want us to fill out some form for our sales tax ID. And every time I try to do it from 
my phone, which, you know, I hardly ever use a computer to work. It doesn't work. So I was going to send you our sales tax license and the email and see if you could figure it out some point today. I'm, it's weird because they've had our sales tax license, but now there's this extra thing that they want us to do. And I have tried and it was not cooperating. All right, just check the box. It's looking good. Do you have I a hammer? I have one nail that didn't go. Yeah. Thanks, Ivy. She says can do. Um, Jenna says, I, I just discovered hammer. you two in the last two weeks and can't stop watching your channel. Love it. Well, thank you. Thanks for finding us. I'm, you know, interestingly enough, you're on Facebook, which our last account we still haven't got back yet. So we're glad you're here, even though we've had a little bit of crazy going on with Facebook. Um, our channel is, our channel, our page is no longer. Um, in the hands of the hackers that took it. Facebook now has it. Like if you go to the about page, it says that the um, owners haven't done the verification process. And that's what we're in the process of doing is like, they want to be super sure that we are the right people since it has been hacked before. So Caitlin's been emailing them back and forth with documentation to prove that it is indeed our page. So at least there's that. And there's still plenty. If you go to Jamie Ray Vintage, there's still videos on there. There's a link to our website. Things like that. If you ever can't, but if for whatever reason, Facebook goes to crap, everything's on YouTube. And we have copies of everything <laughs> on our, we have all of our video content saved. What was I waiting for? Oh, the hammer. Can you pass me the hammer? I did pass it to you. I thought you'd used it already. No, I got I moved distracted. it out of the way. I started talking to my friends here. My sister Deborah's like, you need to come up with a name for your followers. I was like, can we just call them friends? We're all friends here. I don't feel like I want to give you like enough. She's like, that's good. So that's what I feel like when I'm on the live talking to people, I'm just hanging out with my friends. Getting real aggressive over oh, there. Oh, Jana said, I just recently signed up for notifications to come to my phone. Awesome. So you got the text messaging. So we do have um, text messaging. I don't know if Ivy has it, but um, there is a link and a phone number you can text to get text messaging. You can also sign up for our emails and download the Jamie Ray Vintage app, which is super helpful. All right. Off topic, but which is the stove behind you? I love it. And I'm in the market. So this is the KitchenAid. It's a dual energy. So it's, um, it's gas electric, and electric. electric for the oven, gas for the stove. It's okay. It has a convection oven in the bottom. I just, we cook so much. I don't know that it, like we definitely need an industrial, like professional kitchen type stove. And so this there's a okay. couple things on this that we're like, ah, wish this was different. <laughs> the top's really not big enough to use all the burners at the same time. So the middle one is kind of a moot point. It's there for aesthetics. And the knobs, we have replaced the knob. We've only had the stove like in use for a few years because we've only been here for a few years. We've lived here and we two. have replaced the knobs. Like the plasticky metal is coming off the knobs. And to me, when a stove cost over, we got it on clearance because it was in the clearance section, RC Willow, but Willy. But I think the original price was well over $2,000. I just feel like the it's knobs like, should last. It's like $2,800. More. So we're hopefully. Things keep getting derailed and new things are taking my budget. But my goal is in the next year to replace it with a um, French or English handmade stove that's bigger and better made. So it's like an investment piece. I will say this for all intents and purposes, it's been the best stove slash oven that we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, it's just not what I was. Oh, are my out of staples? You might be. I shouldn't push that up my face. Yeah. Do we have more? Um, there was like three left, but it wasn't working. Sorry. Yeah, it, it doesn't load up the last little bit. Yes, hold this. Don't let it touch the ground. You dropped it when you were hammering, and it got lint on it. All right, I'll hold it. Don't let it move. Renee, Robbins, I thought we were your peeps. You are my peeps, my friends here. I cook with the convection all the time, cooks faster and more even. I need to probably try that. I mostly use the oven for like baking. So I don't know that the convection would work well for that. I don't know. We'll see. With the recent uh, hacking on my Facebook page and taking that income, which literally like our business income pays for like expanding our business. So like our website that pays to expand the business, pays our employees, pays for all the things that the business needs, but our income that we personally live off of 
typically we just use our revenue from YouTube and Facebook for ad revenue. And that way we can use the website income and the shop income to just keep reinvesting and growing that business. And so it basically our monthly income when Facebook got hacked is cut in half. So I'm like, well, I guess new stove's probably not in the cards, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it'll come back. I, I emailed them again last night and I was like, listen, Linda, I need my page back. I also need you to back pay me for any ads that happened on my content while I was not in charge of my page. So we'll see. I can strong arm them all I want, but I'm really at their mercy because they're bigger than I am. All right, so I'm doing the corner. I like to get up as close as I can to this. And then I take this fabric and I'm gonna pull it at an angle. And I have one pleat here and one pleat here. There's probably a different way to do it, but that's the way I've always done it. I just wanna hold it down and I'm gonna hammer it because it's getting thick. And then when I cut it, I'll just trim this off. And now it's like a nice edge. If this was thicker foam, then that would be a little bit harder to do, but it's pretty thin. So I'm not really getting on foam this thin. You shouldn't have any puckers. There should be no problem getting around those corners and pulling it nice and taut. I don't know if that's the word. Somebody was taut. like, taut is not a word. I'm like, not tater tots. It taut. sure is. <laughs> T-A-U. I don't know how to spell it. Hey, Shelly. in there, T. Um, I purchased an inlay from you. I'm not sure what type of paint to use. So I like to use the inlays with DIY paint. I have used them with the cottage colors. I just feel like it's easiest and best to use them in DIY paint. We do have some videos on how to use them, but the instructions that are on the back of the inlay are pretty straightforward. So we'll try to do a video on some furniture and do another inlay video for you guys. Um, but yeah, I would use it with DIY paint. That's what I like. And then be sure that once you get that inlay in and you pull it back up, that you do, you set it. So you're going to want to use half big top or half liquid patina and half water. Shake it up in a mister bottle, mist the inlay, let it dry, mist the inlay again, let it dry. Then you can seal it because when you spray a sealer on it, it won't smear and it'll set that paint. I actually am super excited for spring because I cannot wait to bring out the paint sprayer. Like, you have no idea. I'm going to set up a big table. I'm going to put all the junk that I've been wanting to paint that I haven't got to because it was too detailed for a brush. I'm going to spray it. Oh, you smeared it. Okay, I'm going to go a little farther. Let's see. It's fine. It's just like newsprint actually is. It's so cool. I'm still never like, <clears throat> I'm never not impressed by that. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do. Keeping it beachy says, so excited to get my DIY brushes. They work so good for not pulling out the paint on, like they're so soft that they work well with the DIY paint. Just be sure to use them with DIY paint. If you use them with anything, with any kind of top coat in it or top coat, you have to wash them right away. So that way it doesn't, like absorb into the soft bristles all right so that was the courier um there's actually a bunch of different sections you can pull off you don't have to use it all as a single sheet um you could do like small narrow articles use the top of it it's it, you can do a ton of stuff it's a really fun stamp odelia is on here she worked yesterday at the shop. You had to stop it with that hammer. Well, where am I supposed to do this at? Out in the mud room. <laughs> the floor's not going to be any better. That's why everything's shaking is because the floor doesn't have any subfloor. And it's on I'm almost there. Two by I'm six. almost there. I have two more corners. It's on two by six floor joists from the 1917s. I guess that would be the 1910s, right? From 1917. I don't, All you got to do is take it like four steps over into the hall and you'd be good to go. I'm almost done, Seb. <laughs> I'm just going to have to repaint that again. What did you do? This keeps falling every time you bang it with the hammer and they get smeared. And All right, I'm going into the mud room. Thank you. 
There we go. Is that better? Yeah, I didn't get any shaking. No, I just got to cut the fabric. All right, so the ink is permanent ink from IOD. The Cottage Colors has a built-in sealer, so I just need to paint the handles. I'll probably wax the handles, and that rolling pin's done. I'm going to add some more staples in here, but I don't like to add too many till I know that I like the way it looks, because sometimes I've had to pull them out. If you're just joining, Jamie is upholstering the top of like a trunk that is gluing over there because it had some damage to some of the trim on the trunk. We'll bring that back in a minute. We just got to wait for that glue to set up a little bit. And I'm just adding some extra staples because now I know that it's where I want it to be. Now I got to cut some fabric to make this pretty. All right, that's starting to pull paint <laughs> overworking it this one's the one we're going to decoupage so if you're i haven't done it before i've only seen it done on uh, mama bear blues channel so you've seen it done on tv so you're basically an expert yeah <laughs> that's how that works right hey visual like so you can tell someone, it's been proven, you can tell someone a hundred ways from Sunday how to do something, but if you show them one time, they'll usually get it. So somebody said this was a sewing box, maybe? And oh yeah, it, had, it would have might had a have tray, been. But it didn't have like a let, lip inside where a tray could go, but it could definitely be used. I thought I cut this the right length. Did I throw the wrong side? All right, I got to go find some paper I want to use on this. Oh, no, this goes this All right, way. No hammering, please. I'm going to leave this propped over here. I'm done with a hammering stage in my life. Okay. Now I'm trying to, because I want to line up the stripe, not that it actually even matters, but I'm going to try. You get an A for effort, right? This is just the underside. I'm just trying to. Pretty it up. I don't what know if I did the butterflies? The... I have the butterflies, or I could go get the chicken paper. But the, the butterflies I still have. Out. I'm not going to get all these staples covered. One's going to hang out, but it'll be fine. Um, what? Scientific butterfly, or I, I want could. Chickens. You want the chickens? I'll go grab them. They're printing. Show upstairs. me the chickens. But where are you going? Okay, there you are. Just, There's another battery right there if you need it. Hey, Lamb Living. She says, my name is Holly Lamb. I love watching Jamie and Zeb DIY. Welcome, Holly. I'm just seeing. So, so do you, if you guys have dogs <laughs> and uh, you have snow, do you ever have popsicles? We have had that so much lately. The dogs go outside. They have too much fun. They don't want to come back in. And then they do come back in and they literally have snow in clumps, all, especially Cody, just all over the place. It's uh, quite the deal. So I'm just gluing this down to make this neater underneath. Chicken paper, hot off the press. They're printing, it's printing a run of like 40 of them right now. It takes a hot minute. It takes like two hours to print that many because it's such high definition on these. Um, I've had to learn to sleep with the printer going at night. <laughs> All right. So if you're at wondering what kind of gr glue I use, I like to use the Gorilla Hot Glue that's made for fabric, wood, all the things and i would never use it to like do the upholstery like what i did this part but to do this is basically just like covering it up and it's the, no different than putting like trim on a piece which we also use hot glue which for we also lot. use hot glue for okay this needs to be a little drier that is not We've been on here for so i painted this white you can do it without painting it at all i painted it white because a it's going to give it something to hang on to a little better than just the decoupage medium 
to this slick rolling pin because it was sanded and you know it's going to seal the rolling pin up so that you don't get any cannons or anything or oils from the wood and it's going to brighten the paper up too I have two great Pyrenee crosses and they get so full of snow. I can't, I call it snow toe. Zeb yeah. just put, I just uh, had to go wash Cody. I had to go put him in the tub because he literally had icicles and I could not wipe them off with the towel. They weren't melting very fast and he was getting water and snow and mud all over the house. He was freezing. So just went and hosed him down with some warm water and done. He, he got toweled off and he was fine. And it's basically every time he goes to the bathroom. So right now, the dogs are going a little crazy because they love the outside, love being out there, even in the winter. And we're keeping them in unless they have to go to the bathroom. All winter long, it's like Rex's favorite thing to go lay out there when it's sunny on the pool cover because the pool's heated. And so the water underneath is warm and the pool cover sits on top of the water and he's just out there basking. It's like a hot, it's like a hot water bed for him. Spoiled. <laughs> he's real cute. He's worth it. He got, he got a little scolding today though. He's not happy with me. He went and hid under the bed. He, he ate Jack's sandwich off the counter. And that's a no, no. <laughs> Linda, it's Ivy's on here today, not Caitlin, but if you email info at JanuaryVintage.com, uh, I bet Caitlin can look up your phone number. I wouldn't want you to put your phone number here in comments just because we, we like to keep that information private. But Caitlin can definitely look for you. Just All right. Sure no... You need a pencil. We have one of those. I had six of them in here, and you know, pencils and pens, they just go. We have children. People are like, why don't you have stuff in your drawers ready to go? I'm like, listen, we have a lot of kids and also us that misplace things. So yeah, I can't blame it all on the kids. No. Well, we can, but probably shouldn't. It's not all them. Zeb Zeb will typically blame it on them or me because he's I don't ever he does, misplace things. Hey, Zeb never misplaces things. All right, I'm just making sure that this is all the way down, making sure any um, edges are down, any frayed parts are trimmed. I like to have glue all the way to the edge because that will kind of help keep it from fraying over time. And if I wanted to be real crazy, I could put some trim over the top of it, but I'm not that crazy. So this paper is a little bit wider. It's A4 size, so it's like 11.7 inches wide. Yeah, it's made in Japan, so their sizing is a little bit different there. It's metric. Metric. Is that what that is? Yeah, when I order, it's all in millimeters. I'm not going to have any fingerprints left. Can you explain your paid membership? So I would not sign up for the Facebook paid membership right now because... We don't have, we're hoping to get access back to it. Um, but on YouTube, it is like five or seven dollars, depending on where you live, um, a month. Ish. And we do two <laughs> extra lives a month. And once we get Facebook figured out, um, we can start doing that one again. But that's just two extra live videos. They're random, just depends on what we have going on. And then we have business coaching, which is $24.95 a month. You sign up on our website. It is a Facebook group, but it's not attached to our Facebook page. So if like if we ever didn't have access to that group, we could literally just email everybody because we have access to those emails, which is nice. So fun fact, this rolling pin is actually not straight. It has a curve to it. So I don't know if this is going to work very well. And those groups... Um, the business coaching group, we go live once a week and we answer questions throughout the week and it's very business focused, creative business, how to, you know, motivation on social media and um, website stuff, not like specifics. And this is exactly how you step set up your website step by step. 
but basics on how to grow your creative business. And we answer what questions we can. I just like to disclaim that I'm not tech support. So if that's what you need with your business, probably I'm not your best option. But I can usually send you a Google link to where you can't go. We're good at the Google. I'm good at the Google. I have a, my Google ability is strong. There is like a certain uh, flair to Googling, you know. Thank you, Caitlin. Or Ivy just dropped the link to Creative Business. Ivy, can you drop the link to my shirt? Also, if we're ever out of a size of shirts, if you just put notify me when back in stock, Ivy keeps pretty good tabs on ordering for us. Or you can email Caitlin and she can let you know if we're going to get it back in. But usually we, we can. All right. Now this is glued on. There we go. It's mostly straight. This is the bottom, so it's not like critical. But I wanted it to look neater and not see all those staples. And I didn't have like any fabric. So that's going to go on top of my um, chest once it's dry. How long has it been? It's been about 30 minutes. Do you think that's dry yet? We can paint it or? Um, it could probably be getting close. Okay. I'm going to clean up my situation here. Yeah, I can bring it back here so it's not. Oh, just yeah. We don't have royal blue, but we have this in black. This is one I think that they gave me. Oh, how long have we been like this? Oh, um, just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Sorry. It's not your fault. I should have looked up. There's the tote in question. Going to get painted in just a minute. Now I'm like hyper focused on this project right here. It's fine. I'm going to wash the outside. Can I do that? It's got like some smeary stuff on it. I don't know if that's paint or what. Oh, it's definitely food because it's coming right off. I feel like I'm going to pick up some travelers with all this stuff here. I tried to get all my fabric. I hope someday I'm a snowbird, Renee. I want to go somewhere warm in the winter. Or live somewhere where it's warm all the time. That's hard. But not hot. That's that's the trick. <laughs> like it's like nearly impossible to get that where it's not. I mean, move you to Hawaii, I guess. I mean, if you have to. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to go look for a stencil for my fabric because I think I want to stencil it. Although, will it be hard to stencil once I've upholstered it? Okay, so this is liquid patina, and I'm going to put it on here. I want to say halfway around, but I think I'm going to try to go the whole way around and roll it onto the paper. So the liquid patina is its actually a top coat or sealer, liquid sealer but it's all natural, very gentle, no VOC. Works well with the rice paper. And it's gonna be like a nice matte sealer too. All right, wish me luck, here we go. Let me get this on here as straight as I can. Oh, I'm getting some wrinkles because this rolling pin is not straight. Oh, well. Like it has a curve in it. A dippy do? Yes. All right, now I'm going to get that wet and we'll see. So that's on there pretty well already. I do have some wrinkles and stuff. Usually this paper lays down really nice and flat it is not going to on this because of the wrinkles we might have to like just stamp this and That's retry right. on another rolling pin if at first you don't succeed try try again well i'm getting wrinkles but it is sucking it down so that's, that's we'll let nice. it dry and we'll come back to it and then if we can sand it and just get like aged and then reseal it we can leave it like that so one of our retailers said that they had some some issues with the paint bleeding on or the ink bleeding on this 
I have used these like 10 ways from Sunday trying to get them to break. I don't know what um, decoupage medium they were using, but just a heads up, if you're using the liquid patina, like zero issues, you could brush these things all day. They're not going to bleed. I would let that dry and then let's put another coat on. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it wet enough that it'll flatten down. It's going to be good. It's just going to have a couple little wrinkles. You can kind of see the bow okay, I'm on the rolling pin right there. Wrinkles. You can see it's driving me crazy. Uh, all right. Benjamin says, I love wrinkles in my decoupage adds texture. Um, I love it too. It's just the one thing that's nice about the rice paper is that it doesn't wrinkle. But again, you do have to have a flat surface. So it is what it is. We'll let it dry. We'll come back to that. And let's, <clears throat> I'm let's, setting it over here suspended. Let's check out our situation here. Let's, let's actually do the project you came to see. <laughs> Shelly says, hey, we end up with a couple of wrinkles. <laughs> it happens. Let's see um, if this glue holds. It might not. It had some... Nope. It had some pressure. I didn't think glue would do the trick on that. Well, it's but more it's, straight. It's classed. I, well, yeah, I hammered it down. So I, it's, I feel like it's good enough. Let's paint it. Um, no, is, can you just, just try a little nail? What like, little nail? Like a nail you... like this one. Do you have a little short nail? No. I don't keep short nails by hand. Let me see. I do have some lath. Let me see if I can steal a small nail out of the lath and cut it. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna sit here and hold this. Figure out, figure out what right, paint what you want to use on that. To go with that. What? I'm thinking weathered wood because I don't want it to clash with the cream on the fabric. So I think weathered wood would be good, and then we can stencil it. If you have any questions, now is the time. Nothing. Just have awkward silence. <laughs> Hopefully, Zeb's finding those nails. <laughs> I mean, without nails, it'd be okay. I just feel like it would look better if this was down. At least this part right here. Everywhere else, eh, that one needs another one too. Hey, from Arkansas, Wild Oats. She says she usually watches on her TV and never comments. We appreciate your comments. Comments, liking, sharing, all of those things. Are super helpful to let the people of Facebook and thrifted this hammer for a dollar fifty. Super proud about that. Hammers are like thirty dollars. You have a nail? Yeah, I I stole these out of the lath that I have in the garage. Hopefully, it's not too long. So it's old and rusty. It it will be. But I'm gonna try to drive it into the bottom. Nope, it's showing down in the let bottom. Me see. It's fine. We'll just zip it off later. With what? With a multi-tool. That's Do over it. at the barn. Well, we don't have to, we don't have to zip <laughs> it up on this live video. We can finish it and then we'll clean it up. All right. I might have to. Okay. Now that I'm hammering and nailing things, I'm going to zip things off. But it's doing what I needed to do. I'll we put, will make I'll it put right. one right in here too. So this tin is very thin. So the nail just punches right through. What is the color difference between dark and decrepit and weathered wood? Weathered wood is darker gray and um, dark and decrepit is like um, a walnut color. Like if you've ever used walnut stain, old walnut. What's, I haven't used dark walnut. I haven't used traditional stain in so long I forgot the names. Dark walnut. So dark and decrepit is a similar color to dark walnut and weathered wood is a dark gray brown. Let's paint this. This video has been lagging. It's been lagging for everybody or just Cheryl. Um, and then what is the difference between hemp oil and tongue oil, Zeb? I honestly couldn't tell you. The tongue oil and the hemp oil that we've had are both uh, food safe. I feel like the tongue oil, the hemp oil. It dries oil, harder. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say the hemp oil is more of like a wood conditioner, whereas the tongue oil dries hard, almost like a resin type material. So like it'll absorb down into the wood, condition the wood a little bit, but then it also dries hard as it goes. So you can get a, like a really high sheen polish on the tongue oil if you want. Is there a clean brush? Over there, you've got them. Okay. I'm going to get this one done first because we're going to want to stencil. I'm going to stencil the front of the box. I was going to stencil the fabric, but I've decided to not do that. I'm not okay. going to push my luck today. My Straight brush, on the shiny metal. Well, my brush is a little wet, so <clears throat> it's going to need a few coats. 
Well, you didn't really squeeze them out. Nope. It's all right. It's fine. I'm going to go check on my paper. Okay. You can check on your paper and I'm going to paint this. I probably would have got better coverage if my brush hadn't been wet, but I just washed it before the live video. It's okay. If the first co coat is gross, the second coat will be fine. Still wet, so I'm gonna wait for a minute. Do you wanna try to heat gun it a little bit or? Um, yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, I don't think that one's sold yet. So worst case scenario. If it doesn't work out, we can sand it off and stamp it. If it does work out, I listed it already. That one sold to Remy. The one that you stamped. I gotta get that over the shop today. If you want to purchase our project, you can visit jamierayvintage.com. Click Saturday Thrift Hall, and any of our like hand painted stuff is going to show up there. All right, base coat on. Let's heat gun this. I mean, it's not the worst thing. It just doesn't show off how like non wrinkly the rice paper really is. I turn this off. I think I did. All right, not lagging for everybody. So sometimes when it's lagging, it's if it's just like one person, it's typically their internet source, but we like to double check. Because we do our best. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. All right, I'm taking this one. You can use the one. We got a couple slight little bubbles. I'm going to put one more code on here. Hopefully the kids aren't on the internet. No, they're, they're, I told them to get off. They should be, they're usually really good about it. I, Cheryl says she bets the rolling pin will turn out nice. We're good well, at making Cheryl. things happen around here. We actually, that mirror that we did yesterday for paint a palooza we wound up um, having to chip off some of the milk paint and then put more faded burlap over it, but it still looks cool. It's got some really amazing texture now. Yeah, it's awesome. So I'm just heat getting this so I can throw a second coat on it so Zeb can stencil it, but you could just let it air dry. Be careful when you're heat getting even the DIY paint that you don't bubble it. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a sec. I'll come help you heat gun. Well, you can heat gun one side while I'm doing the other. Well, it should heat gun pretty quick with the, uh, the that metal's yeah. pretty thin. I feel like once I get it hot, it just kind of goes. Are you also touching up as you go? Is that what I saw you doing with the brush? Um, what heat guns do we use? We, these are just Wagner's. I think Caitlin's on here now. Caitlin, can you drop our Amazon link? Uh, we do get paid like two cents a rolling uh, heat gun <laughs> when you buy it, but we can give you the Amazon link for them. We go through probably half a dozen of these a year, but we also drop them a lot as case in point just dropped it and we use them a ton. Pretty much every time we paint, we use them because we're impatient and it's been winter and we're like, in the summer, if you just set something out in the sun, it'll dry it faster than the heat gun would dry it. All right, Caitlin is maybe not quite on here. It says she's in. Oh, she's in. Okay, Caitlin, would you drop the link to the Wagner heat gun, the Amazon link? Sorry, we're swapping people because Ivy has somewhere to be at 11 and Caitlin was at the shop working. Um, somebody said... I'm just making sure that I didn't miss a question. I thought I did, but I know. When do you use clear resin? Uh, when For we want to do a resin stuff, pour. To cover tabletops. Yeah, to put in knots on tabletops. I like to dye it black and fill knot holes on tables. 
things like that. When we're using it in molds, we always use white. I so, guess if you were going to dye it or put stuff in it, you would use the clear. Yeah, if you yeah, if you dye the white, it's going to like oh, let's say you dye the white red. What? It's like a little chunky right there. Oh. Um it's going to turn out kind of pinkish. But if you dye the clear red, it'll be fine and be red. <clears throat> Thank me. you. Caitlin's going to grab that link. She's just checking her notes. All right, I think I've got this pretty well covered and dry on my side. Oh, little dab here. I was going, oh, I was thinking we should also show them before we're done. I want to show them the candlestick with the dark wax this morning that we had put the clay oh, on yesterday. yesterday. And is there anything else you want to see from yesterday? We can show them where the mirror is at right now because we had to touch it up. But. Oh, there was a question about using DIY to paint a kitchen. Thank you, Lisa. I knew there was something else. Yeah, you can. So these these cabinets are painted with DIY paint, sealed with Sweet Pickens top coat on their beadboard. The only place we've had a problem is where the kids handle it to tell them where our garbage can is, but that's yeah. to be expected. But other than that, that like on any cabinet. Yeah, the cab cabinets hands. have held up well. Before that, we did it in our last house on existing cabinets. We used White Swan. So yeah, absolutely you can. All right. So here is. <clears throat> there were mirrors behind this. We put the molds in um, and then dark wax everything. You see, focus for me. There we have it. So you can see there. Turned out cool. And it was bad before. It was like probably one of the worst candlesticks I've ever had. It had purchased. mirrors on it. <clears throat> we could have just like salt washed or painted the mirrors, but we thought that the molds would look better, and I think they do. You want me to, oh, this side needs painted over here. I need to paint all the sides. I'm just like pulling off some of the extra paint where it's puddled up in the uh, edges. All right, do you want to stencil that? Let's not put a second coat on the back. We can second coat the sides, then put it on its back to stencil. Okay. And I'll paint this side when you're done with that. So I've grabbed the cotton stencil. This one has gone the distance. I think this summer when we design some new stencils, we'll do some more like this because this one is one of our more popular big ones. Okay. What kind of stapler is that? So we use Milwaukee, it's the M12 system and it works pretty good. We get it at Home Depot. Sometimes you can get it at local hardware stores. Yeah, there's a lot of places they carry it. We just get it at Home Depot. And we are not sponsored by them, that's backwards. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I'll paint the other side of that. In a minute. Do you have a stencil brush out? Huh? No. I'll go grab one. That would be, that would have been good. We have a stencil brush out, but it has gold wax on it. Uh, yeah, yesterday. it's got gold wax. <laughs> we use them so much for waxing, it's hard to find one that doesn't have, I mean, they've all probably had wax on them at one point or another. Yeah, this is probably my favorite one. I use the improved number 10 cotton, the center of it, quite a bit. There's that. And then it has the MFG Co over here. I use just that quite a bit too on a lot of I'm my. I'm going to show you this is we're repainting. I don't know if it's getting dark. It, why is this little sunshine there? Because you darkened it up. Leave some of my face in there and it won't darken up. I don't know. Just I'll, I'll get this finished and share a picture later. The thing is not cooperating. So I'm just using the cottage color, built-in sealer, going with it. Um, it is a little thinner than the DIY paint. So if you're used to stenciling with DIY paint, which is clay-based and super thick, you know, just offload quite a bit with this and you'll be fine. I'm going to tell you touched right here with your finger because it's a fingerprint. Just trying to, you know, trying to claim it, fingerprinted Sorry. it. We're gonna white wax it, I think. Mirrors like to mess with lighting. Let me see if there's any questions. All right, so one of the things you need to know about stenciling, um, a good stencil is key. We have JRV stencils on our website. We have a couple hundred different styles. 
um, they're nice and thick, way thicker than like industry standard that you would get at the craft store. You know, those blue ones that are flimsy. These are what my stencil manufacturer says. These are like construction grade, like they use them to stencil, um, like, you know, when they spray stencils on sidewalks. Or stain them. Um, and a good stencil brush. So we have JRV stencil brushes. We also have retailers. So if you go to jrvwholesale.com, you can find a resale retailer that carries them. They may not have everything, so check with them first. Or yeah, we you have can, so many. Yeah. Well, we just have a lot of different things. So just make sure they have what you're looking for. Or you can buy it at jamierayvintage.com. And we use the – which stencil brush is that one? This is the – I want to say it's the three-quarter, half. I don't – I can't it's remember. It's not the half. It's – the one, I think. No, this isn't a one inch. You sure? Yes. Okay, three quarter inch. We're gonna go with that. I don't even know if we have a three quarter inch now that I'm thinking about it. Well, where's I don't the... ever look at the numbers. I just use them. We are the best. This one doesn't have the numbers on it. Oh, is that like a prototype? Or I would have told you already. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, they work really great for waxing detail. Um, I like to brush the edges of things with them, and then for stenciling. So this Make is sure the half off. inch. So this is probably three quarter to That's one. That's a one. That's a one inch, I think. Well, anyways, my point being, make sure you offload. So that's what Zeb's over doing, to, doing over to the side. I know we have a lot of new people on here that might not know that. If you go to stencil and you don't get most of the paint off of the brush, it's going to leak under the edges. Um, so make sure that you're offloading it to where it's almost completely dry. If you're still having leakage, that means your brush needs to be even drier. And the more you do it, the more you'll like know what it needs to feel like when you're stenciling. D Barb says they are nice and really thick stencils. Love them. Thank you. I, I like to have the stencils thick because we use them a lot. Like this one, I don't even know. We need to wash it because the paint is building up on top because we've used it so much. We're just adding to the thickness and durability. How do you clean dried wax off of your stencil brush? So you shouldn't use your brushes for wax and paint. It's not a good idea. We do, but I'm just telling you, you shouldn't. Um, we use warm water, which will help melt the wax. And we usually use Dawn, which is like a decent, like it's a degreaser. Um, if you have a, a good degreasing soap, that'd be okay. And we just clean it as good as we can. But you really probably should have a wax brush for what, or a stencil brush for waxing and a stencil brush for stenciling. The DIY brush cleaner works well to get the waxes out of your brushes. Yeah. I'd like to say that we keep them separate, but we don't. So. <laughs> That's how I clean mine. We're about to bring this home. I'm stenciling as quick as I can. You're doing a really good job. Look. I also use, if you guys have bought our French soap that we carry on the website, I use that to wash my brushes because it's usually what's by my sink. And so either that or the um, JRV, we have dish soap. I use that. It works pretty well too. Jenny says the trunk. <laughs> The trunk is finally on the it's show. It's getting there. We've had it hiding over in the corner being glued, and then the glue didn't really do what we wanted it to. So we nailed it. I was hoping it was tougher than it was, and it couldn't hold up to the bent metal. So I just feel like it was had a lot working against it. Yeah, it did. But it, it did work in a few spots where it wasn't as bent. And that's why it was $3, because probably nobody was going to buy it. I feel like it should have been a dollar. But if you're at the thrift store and something's not priced or it's broken and maybe they didn't notice, like a lot of times you can talk to the manager and say, hey, this is priced like it's not broken because I've seen similar things for this price here. Would you give me a discount? And a lot of times they'll discount it. This one wasn't priced. So when we went to the manager and just said, hey, this is broken, it's not priced, he just told us three bucks, which I thought was a good deal. Well, and a lot of times they put it out on the floor and then it gets broken out on the floor. Yeah, that happens too. Are you coming over the side so the word won't be complete? It's pretty complete. I centered it. Thanks, Cheryl. She says, you two are great. I love everything you two do. I love most of the stuff we do. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I got to redo that. You I got a, a little job. juicy on a couple of places because I was hurrying. No, that's good. But. Ta-da. All right. So it's our 11 o'clock. We're not going to get time to finish this all the way, but I do want to show you what it looks like with the fabric on the top. Is this dry? Yeah. Okay. We will off camera finish painting and waxing the base, but 
this is what it looks like. So if you don't remember what it looked like from the beginning, I can actually pull up the picture on my phone because I put it on the website. I can pull up, unless I deleted those, which I don't think I did yet. No. Okay. All right, and we got the grain sack stripe on the top there. Here, I want to show them what, hold on, it's really dusty. Can you guys see? There you go. That's what it looked like before. Um, it's blurry. There we go. It was gold and broken on the bottom and a really dry rotted fabric that we removed the old fabric. I Lysoled the um, foam because it was in good shape, but I wanted to reuse it. And then we just <clears throat> used new, sorry, I'm losing my voice, grain sack fabric. And then I hot glued a piece to cover the staples. And then we painted the base. We will go ahead and finish painting this. We'll clear wax. It will probably white wax along the edges to make it look a little oxidized. And then once the wax cures, we'll get it re-photographed so you guys can see that. If you guys want the paint products, uh, fabrics, stencils, <clears throat> decoupage paper, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, you guys. Have a great Wednesday.